What's going on everybody? Edison T. Crux here and welcome back to another How to Make a Nuzlocke tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to edit a Nuzlocke video in Lightworks that is from a game that uses two screens, such as from the DS generation games or the 3DS generation games. So I'm going to rename this project. Um, now if you did not see my previous video on using Lightworks, and then you're going to have to watch that too. Um, let's see, we're going to call this DS Nuzlocke Basics. You're going to want to watch that previous video I did on the basics of using Lightworks, because if you do not see that, I won't be covering any of those basics in this video. So if you haven't seen that, you're going to want to watch that first, and then come back here, and I'll show you how to do two screens in your Nuzlocke. The first thing you're going to do when you make a new project is you're going to want to import your film. I have that in How to Make a Nuzlocke. And the things that I'm going to need for this are going to be DS Raw. This is my gameplay footage I have. I'm going to want to make Create Link, which works pretty good. And make sure all that is set. And I will go ahead and import that. And one more thing that's actually in a different folder is in the graphics. I need the layout that I have. And I have that. That is this one. And those should be the only two things I need at the moment. So first, I'm going to go ahead and start a new edit. You can either click on this button here, create a new edit, or if you don't do that, you can simply open up one of these, and it'll show you a little preview, and hit replace into the targeted edit. If there is no targeted edit, it creates one. Um, it will name it based on that. I like to keep these kind of cleaned up a little bit, so we're going to call this the main edit, or you can call it whatever works for you. So the only drawback I see here is that doing it this way did not add any audio tracks, which, if you are needing that, which honestly you probably will, you can just real quick add two audio tracks. I right clicked over here and added tracks. I'm going to do audio two. There we go. Problem solved. So this puts, as you can see, I can hit play, but all this is is a still image of the um, layout that I have I'm using. In this case, I'm just using the basic one that I provided for free. If you haven't seen that video where you can actually use this for free and edit it, you might want to check that out so you can use it for your video. Now, the next thing you need to do is you're going to need to add some more tracks, just like I showed you a moment ago for the audio, but you're going to need to add some video tracks. Now, for a two-screen setup, you're going to need to add, unsurprisingly, two video tracks because we need one video track that's going to be on the bottom in this case for the layout and then one video track for each of the two screens. Now there are some other ways you can do this that I will not be covering in this particular video. Ones that have it so that the top um, video track is going to be your layout and you have the videos beneath them. Right now I feel like this is going to be the easiest way to do it for most people because they can use very raw footage such as this. As you can see here in the footage I'm pulling from it is a very raw file. This is just directly from, in my case, a DS capture. Um, in your case, it might be an emulator or possibly even some kind of fancy thing where you're uh, pointing a webcam at your device. Not really sure what you're doing, but this is what it looks like for me. Very raw, lots of blank space over here. And the reason that this method is nice is you can use just whatever kind of footage you need. There's no pre-setup you need to do. So what we're going to do is we do not want the audio from this to go in here at the moment. So I'm going to uncheck the audio tracks. Honestly, that might not be an issue for you, so you can ignore that if you like. At the moment, we're going to keep it with no audio for simplicity's sake. Now, what I did there was I hit replace into the targeted edit, and this clip went into the top video track, because that's the first one that's available. And it went right wherever my cursor was. So since that was at the beginning, it went right at the beginning. And you can now see if I move my cursor here, that's all the footage you see. You can't see anything of the layout beneath it or anything like that. Now, I need two video tracks because it's a two screen. The way you can want to do that is bring your little cursor point all the way to the beginning of the video. You can either click and drag it in this area all the way to the beginning, or if you're somewhere like here, you can use this button, jump backwards to the next cut slash event. In this case, that would be the very beginning because there's no other cuts or events prior to that point. To get a video easily copied into this slot where we need it, you can uncheck this top video track. And that will make it so that then this is the most likely one it will go to. And we're going to actually copy exactly the same video track into the second one. 
So as you'll see now, I can close this because I don't need it anymore. The top and second to top video tracks are exactly the same. They're this exact same footage. And beneath that, we have the layout. Excellent. Now, this is where you might think, okay, this is going to get really challenging. Honestly, it's not. All you have to do is mouse over one of the two video tracks. In this case, I'm going to do the top one. Right click, go to Effects, Add, and we want to do under DVEs. This might be, um, might be minimized for you. If it is, just go ahead and click DVEs, which are used as regular DVEs used for making adjustments to where the screen is, also doing crops and such. But there's a custom setting on DVE where there is split screen, or also quad split screen. In this case, split screen would do the job. If you were also doing a face cam, you'd need to use quad split screen. Now you'll see over here, the effects panel opens up, and this has a spot for right picture and left picture. The settings will be the same kind of thing. It automatically, as you can see, moved these two to be mirrored next to each other, side by side. Now if that was all you need to do, it'd be easy peasy, but we need to do a little bit more than that, don't we? So I'm going to find a spot somewhere in the middle here where I can easily see where the top and bottom screens cut off. Now this next part is where it gets all, seems a little bit tricky, but it's honestly not too bad. I'm going to start with the right picture, since it's on the top here, and that's actually going to be my bottom screen. So what I'm going to do is crop. You'll see that option here. And we need to crop out everything that is not the bottom screen in this case. So from the left, there should be a little bit to crop off. And you just simply click and drag this until you can see it. It might be a little difficult. In fact, let me just see if it will show me anything else of the bottom beneath it. All right, I apologize about that. It seems like I'm having a little bit of issue getting the split screen option to work. Um, like I said before, this is a very, very quirky program, um, but it is available for free, which makes it a really nice option. So we're going to go another route to do this, and we are going to unhighlight or unselect the top track. Now make sure you are doing this from the bottom up. So whatever track is closest down to your layout, start with that one. We're going to highlight this one so we can work with that. And we're going to have this be, how about this will be the top screen we'll start with. We're going to right click, add, DVE. Now if we do this right, this is the area I was running into the issue with before, we should be able to crop off the left, and you can see already from here it's cropping off the bit over there. Now there'd be a lot to crop off the right since that's just how the raw file I have it. That's roughly correct. Put it right about there. And the bottom, same basic deal. Crop it until, since this is going to be the top screen, we'll crop there. Now if you do the top uh, video track first, sometimes what happens is sometimes it gets confused as to what to show underneath it. The transparency issues get a little bit funky, and that's where it runs into the problem. Now, you can use either reposition it with this, as you can see it moves around like that, that's the x ratio, or the x-axis and the y-axis, or if you mouse over your preview window, you'll see a position option in DVE, which means that's how that's doing. Now, it would be a little bit confusing because this is based on the uncropped version of it. So that might be a little bit confusing to work with. We're going to use that, though, just to put it roughly in the center. And then we're going to go over here to Scale Master. If you want to keep it proportionate, which we do in this case, we can just increase that. Now, it is, again, growing based on that one point. So it's going to be a little bit strange. It takes a little bit of, of trial and error to get it to work just correct. We're going to do a little bit of that. Find just the right size here, and then just the right position as well. All right, I have now positioned it to roughly the correct location. Very cool. Now, if we were to go anywhere in this, let's just go ahead to around here. You can see the character move around. You'll see that now just the top screen is positioned right where we want it. Fantastic. Then all you have to do is do the same thing for the bottom screen. We're going to reselect that top uh, video track. We're going to right click, add, DVE. And we're going to do the same process over again. This time, cropping out to get the bottom screen. So again, crop off the left. You'll now be able to see the top screen over there underneath it. 
crap out of the right. Excellent. We'll call it about there. Might not be exactly right, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it'll be close enough. The exact numbers of where it will have to crop at will obviously vary from person to person from your exact uh, input source. So I'm not going to worry too much about explaining that. Now in this instance, we have to actually shrink it a little bit because the raw file is a little bit larger than the space we have. So we're just going to shrink it a little bit until we find roughly the size we need to be. And then reposition it to roughly where we want it to be. I won't necessarily get it exactly perfect in this tutorial, but you're welcome to play around with it in your own space and get it just right for you. But for now, we'll say that's close enough. Yeah. So now if we watch this, we can see that the both the top and bottom screen are clearly visible. I would normally, if I was doing this, clean this up just a little bit. As you can see, it's not quite perfectly aligned, and there's a little bit of spaces and such, but you get the general idea. Now, if you had to do this for every single video you make, that'd be very time consuming. So I'm going to show you a shortcut that'll make this go a lot easier for you. Once you've got them, both of them set up exactly how you want, you can right click, go to settings, and that will bring back up your effects menu. As you can see, you can click from up here from the different video tracks without having to re-click on down here. Makes it a little bit easier. V2, that's the one we just assigned, that's the bottom screen. And you can see all the settings here. Now, to make it super easy for next time, save as temp excuse me, save as template. You can save this. Now you can name this. In this case, I would name it something along the lines of DS bottom screen. Category, you could do DVEs, you could do wherever you feel it would be most helpful. Or possibly favorites if you do this a lot. Then I'm not going to do it in this case, but if you do, I will show you where you'll find that because I have actually done that myself for some. Favorites, this is some gym, trainer tra or gym training screen as well as HD Nuzlocke HD multi screen. If you couldn't tell from the titles, those are ones that I've done that automatically set it up. That way, when you need to make another video, you simply lay out your tracks, the two tracks that are identical, which is important, and then you just click on whichever one you want to be the bottom screen, go to Add, and then you just find either Favorited or wherever you put that template that you made. You click it, and it will automatically go exactly where you set it to be. Then simply do the same thing for the top screen, and you'll be good to go, and it should be a super simple and easy process to have the two screens going together, no matter what size your input is. It doesn't have to fit perfectly to where the layout goes. And that's all I have for today's tutorial. I hope you found this really useful. If you have, hit that like button. And also, if you use this, and if you've been using this in one of your um, Nuzlocke videos, leave a comment down below. I love seeing how people use these tutorials in the future. Also, if there's anything else that you're having need for in your Nuzlocke videos, that you find that I do not get have a tutorial for using Nuzlocke or using I'm sorry, Lightworks or perhaps OBS or anything along those lines, feel free to leave a comment suggesting it. I'll either answer it to the best of my knowledge, or I possibly might even make a tutorial in the future of it. Anyway, that's all I have time for today. Uh, until next time, catch you later, everybody.